2002, Andrew Lau and Alan Mack teamed up to direct the first in a series of films that would go on to be a trilogy. Conveniently named Internal Affairs, Internal Affairs 2, and Internal Affairs 3, Alan actually co-wrote the trilogy along with Felix Chong. Now, looking at the geographical stats for this podcast, since most listeners aren't in China, I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess that you're not in China as you're listening to this. So I'll jump to the conclusion and guess again that you probably haven't seen 2002's Internal Affairs or any of its sequels. What you might have seen, though, was when Martin Scorsese won his first, and at least as of this recording, only Oscar, when he remade Internal Affairs with the 2006 film The Departed. Well, it's not like he was the only one who remade it. Actually, a lot of the credit can go to William Monaghan, who also won an Oscar for Best Writing Adapted Screenplay when he adapted the Internal Affairs film into the screenplay for The Departed. While many people considered Martin Scorsese's Oscar win a long overdue award for a career of hits, the same isn't quite true for Monaghan. In fact, quite the opposite. You see, The Departed earned William an Academy Award as just the second feature film he'd write. And it's William's very first movie that we're going to be looking at today. In 2005, Kingdom of Heaven was written by William Monaghan and directed by another amazing director, Ridley Scott. Interestingly, a director that, despite being nominated for four Oscars, again, as of this recording, has yet to win. Now, if you're listening to this on the day it's released, then today marks the anniversary of the Crusades. Well, the first one at least. You see, it was on November 27th in the year 1095 when Pope Urban II preached about the Crusades, kicking off the Crusades that would last almost 200 years until 1291. That means this year, 2017, marks the 922nd anniversary of a series of so-called holy wars that ended up causing millions of people to die and countless more heartache, destruction, and pretty much everything else that comes with war. So this week, I invite you to join me on a trip through history as we travel all the way back to the 12th century to learn the true story behind the 2005 film, Kingdom of Heaven. I'm Dan LeFebvre, and this is Based on a True Story. Before we travel back to the time of the Crusades for today's story, we need to set up our game, Two Truths and a Lie. If you're new to the show, here's how it works. I'll give you three facts. Two of them are true. One of them is a lie. Okay, here they are. Number one, Balian was an agnostic who preached religious equality in the face of a holy war between Muslims and Christians. Number two, there was no romantic relationship between Balian and Sibylla. Number three, Salah ad dins army slaughtered the kingdom of Jerusalem's army at the Battle of Hattin. Listen closely for the two truths scattered throughout the episode, then by a process of elimination, you'll know which one was a lie. And of course, we'll do a recap at the end of the episode to see how well you did. Have you ever wished you could dive a little bit deeper into some of the stories that we learn about here on Based on a True Story? Well, there's tons of resources over at Based on a True Story Podcast.com, of course, for free. But if you become an official producer of the show, you'll get exclusive access to bonus episodes. They typically come out about once a month and are some of the articles and historical documents that I come across while researching episodes. For example, for this month, producers will get a special treat, four bonus episodes, each one an article going deeper into the main characters from the movie. We have an episode on Salah ad -Din, Guy Delisian, Sibylla, and of course, Balian of Ibelin, all of them read by yours truly. So if you find this episode ends and you've still got some time in your commute, chores, or whatever it is that you're doing while you're listening, hop on over to patreon.com slash based on a true story podcast to get access to those four bonus episodes. That's a total of about two more hours of bonus content. Once again, that's patreon.com slash based on a true story podcast. And with that, let's compare history with Hollywood's version of Kingdom of Heaven. The 
movie begins with some text on the screen to explain the situation. We're in France in the year 1184. According to the movie, it's been almost a century since Christians have seized control of Jerusalem. While Europe is gripped by poverty, both rich and poor are enchanted by the thought of the Holy Land to find fortune. Finally, the film mentions one knight who's returning home to find his son. We find out in the next scene that one knight is Godfrey de Abelin, who's played by Liam Neeson in the film. Let's start by laying down a blanket statement for this entire episode. As is often the case with history, the further you go back, the murkier the waters get. Basically, there's a lot we don't know about the true story of the character Orlando Bloom plays in the movie, Balian. But as far as we know, Godfrey de Evelyn is completely fictional and a character made up for the movie. Balian's real father was called Balian, or as most historians refer to him, Balian the Elder. Although it's worth pointing out that some historians refer to him as Barazan, that's B-A-R-I-S-A-N, instead of Balian, B-A-L-I-A-N. While there's some who think that Balian the Younger, the guy that Orlando Bloom plays, could have also been Barazan, Balasanus, or maybe even Baladan, the latter of which is a name mentioned multiple times in the Christian Bible, in 2 Kings 20, verses 12 through 15, and Isaiah chapter 39, verse 1. That's B-A-L-A-D-A-N, if you want to look it up. Although the timeline in the Bible would have been before any of these events, so that just adds to the historical confusion. Were these the same people, or different people throughout history with similar names? Or are there some things that were lost in translation? Maybe. Oh, and the real Balian was born somewhere around 1143, meaning when the movie began in 1184, he would have been older than the then 28-year-old Orlando Bloom is when the movie was made. More specifically, he would have been 41 years old. And I guess while we're at it, something else that's a pretty big inaccuracy in the film is when Balian doesn't seem to know how to get to Jerusalem. While Balian the Elder was known to have had excursions throughout Western Europe, there's not much evidence to suggest that his youngest son was born during those adventures like the movie suggests. In fact, most historians believe Balian was born in Jerusalem and, as far as we know, lived there for most of his early life. Going back to the movie, there's a scene at a pilgrim camp on the road to Messina where we run into another character. This is Guy Delisian, as played by Martin Sokis. Guy was a real person, and not to get too far ahead of our story here, but there's no indications that there was any sort of a love triangle between Guy and Sibylla and Balian. Sibylla is played by Eva Green in the film. Perhaps one of the most convincing arguments against Balian and Sibylla having a relationship is the mere fact that Balian was actually married to a woman named Maria Comnena in 1177, so before the movie events took place. And while the movie makes it seem like Balian did have a wife who passed away, if you remember, the very opening scene had Balian's wife being buried. Most historians believe Maria actually died somewhere between 1208 and 1217, which would mean the movie's timeline is off if they're trying to assume that the woman cast simply as Balian's wife in the movie and played by Natalie Cox was indeed Maria. Oh, and something else that the movie doesn't mention is that Balian and Maria had four children together. It's also worth pointing out that Maria was the widow of King Amalric I of Jerusalem, again, Going back to if Balian was married to Maria before the timeline of the movie began and Maria was the widow of the king of Jerusalem, I would think that Balian would know where Jerusalem was. Now, King Amalric I of Jerusalem was, in turn, Sibylla's father. But Sibylla was not Maria's child. Sibylla was the daughter of King Amalric I and his first wife, Agnes, while Maria was Amalric's second wife. To make matters even more complex, some historians even believe that Hugh of Ebelin was Agnes's husband first. I know that's a bit confusing. Let's try to clarify this a little bit. Hugh of Ebelin is not in the movie at all, but he was Balian the Elder's oldest son. 
so the older brother of the character that Orlando Bloom plays in the movie. In 1153, he was either married or betrothed to Agnes. We don't really know for sure which one it was. In 1157, he was captured in battle, and Agnes ended up marrying King Amalric I of Jerusalem. I'm sure there's more to that story there, but that's a rabbit trail we can't really go down in this episode. In 1160, Amalric and Agnes had their first child, Sibylla. Then the next year, 1161, they had a son they named Baldwin. Now there's some confusion here with what we know. Some historians, like William of Tyre, suggest that Agnes was, well, less than morally pure. And as a result, the High Council in Jerusalem refused to uphold Amalric's crown for as long as the two were married. So Amalric annulled his marriage and Agnes went back to Hugh of Ibelin, who she married. Again? Maybe. As I said, there's com some confusion with what we know. We don't really know if Agnes and Hugh were married beforehand or just betrothed. But what is true is that Sibylla and Baldwin were brother and sister. Now, Baldwin was the leper king of Jerusalem played by Edward Norton in the movie. In 1167, then, Amalric married Maria Comnena. And if that name sounds familiar, it's because we just learned that she would go on to marry Balian. But that didn't happen until after Amalric died from what most historians believe was dysentery. That was in 1174. Three years after that, as we learned, Maria married Balian. Hopefully, that helps clarify things a little bit. If nothing else, it shows that even though the movie makes it seem like Eva Green's version of Sibylla and Orlando Bloom's version of Balian didn't know much about each other before they met, the truth is that the two families had quite an intertwined relationship, to say the least. Back in the movie, we see Liam Neeson's character, Godfrey, get injured by an arrow. As a result of the injury, he develops a fever and his health declines quickly. Before he passes away, though, we see him pass off his titles and lands to Balian. We already learned Godfrey was fictional, so it's probably not much of a surprise that this premise is fictional as well. In truth, Balian the Younger was, well, the youngest son of Balian the Elder. We already heard a bit about his oldest brother, Hugh, but he also had an older brother named Baldwin, not to be confused with the Leper King Baldwin played by Edward Norton in the movie. Hugh died in 1169, which would have passed the lordship of Ebelin to Baldwin, except he didn't want it because he was already happy with a lordship at a place called Ramla. So he gave the Ebelin lordship to his younger brother, and that's how Balian became Balian of Ebelin, or Balian, the lord of Ebelin. Oh, and by the way, I know I mentioned earlier that his name might not have been Balian. It might have been Barisan or something like that. I'm using Balian throughout this episode because that's what they used in the movie. We also have some ancient Arabic sources that mention Balian as being, quote, like a king, end quote, which suggests that even though Balian didn't get the lordship of Ebelin right after his father's death, like the movie shows, that didn't stop him from making a name for himself. With all of this talk of various marriages, I'm sure you're wondering, what about the marriage we saw in the movie between Guy Delisian and Sibylla? Was that real? Yes, but there's more to the story that the movie doesn't mention. Remember Sibylla's mom, Agnes? Well, some historians believe that Agnes was sleeping with a man named Amory. Amory, which is spelled A-I-M-E-R-Y, invited his younger brother to come to Jerusalem, who accepted the invitation and arrived somewhere around 1180. His younger brother's name? Guy Delisian. Although the movie mentions that Sibylla was betrothed to Guy at the age of 15 at the behest of her mother, history doesn't really seem to agree with that synopsis. We don't know a lot of the reasonings that went into the facts, but some suggest that Guy was a surprise husband to Sibylla when, in 1180, the two were married. If you recall, that's the same year Guy arrived in Jerusalem, Apparently, he didn't waste much time. The reason why Guy didn't waste much time is something that the movie indicates by showing the leprous king. That's true, and so it would seem that when Guy arrived in Jerusalem, he saw the sickly king and took advantage of the opportunity. Back in the movie, one of the main rivals to the Christians in Jerusalem is the Saracen leader, Salah Adin. 
The movie doesn't really talk much about Salah ad backstory since it focuses more on the Christian side of the story, but Salah ad was indeed a real person. In fact, thanks to a biography written by a scholar named Ibn Shaddad, Salah ad is one of the characters in the movie that we know the most about. Ibn Shaddad wrote his biography during Salah ad lifetime and it would seem the two were friends. Now, if you're a patron of the show, you'll get a special bonus episode to learn more about Salah ad But Salah ad was born in the small town of Tikrit in Mesopotamia. Well, I say small town. Today, Tikrit, which is located in modern-day Iraq, has about 160,000 people in it. Of course, we don't really know the exact population back in 1138 when Salah ad was born. Oh, and his real name was Yusuf. Salah ad was an honorary name referred to in Arabic as a lakab that means righteousness of the faith. Although being born in Mesopotamia, it seemed that Salah ad made his way to Damascus because that's where his education really grew. From what we can gather, it sounded like Salah ad was a really smart guy who studied arithmetic, law, religion before his military career began. In the movie, there's a moment where Edward Norton's version of King Baldwin mentions defeating Salah ad at the age of 16. While the film never comes out and says it, the implication that I got from that memory was that they're trying to say the leper king, Baldwin, defeated Salah ad and drove the Muslims out of Jerusalem. In fact, the King Baldwin that Edward Norton portrays in the film was Baldwin IV. He reigned from 1174 to 1185. Something else the movie doesn't really mention that's important to understand is that Jerusalem was an entire kingdom and not just a city like it is now. While the borders of that kingdom shifted around quite a bit, when it was at its largest, the kingdom of Jerusalem contained most of modern-day Israel, Palestine, and some lands in modern-day Libya, Syria, and Jordan. As Baldwin IV's name implies, he was not the first king of the kingdom of Jerusalem. That would be King Baldwin I, who set up the kingdom of Jerusalem after the First Crusade captured the lands at the request of Pope Urban II in the year 1095. Well, that's when the First Crusade began. It ended in 1099 when, on July 15, 1099, the Templars captured Jerusalem. Then, in 1100, King Baldwin I's reign began. So, That's 84 or 85 years before the events in the movie. In that time, the kingdom of Jerusalem had five different kings until, in 1174, Baldwin IV became the sixth king of the young kingdom. While the movie makes it seem like it was right after Baldwin IV died when Gijalizian took the crown, that's not really true. King Baldwin IV did die from his leprosy, though, That was in the spring of 1185, and it ended his reign. Some historians believe that before passing, Baldwin IV made sure that the crown would pass to his nephew and Sibylla's son, who became King Baldwin V. That was in an attempt to keep the throne from Guy Delisian. That was a short-lived reign, though, and the following year, King Baldwin V died. He was only nine years old. After King Baldwin V's death, is when the crown went to Sibylla, who, as the movie shows, chose Guy Delisian as both her husband and the next king. So while the movie might have shown the right people, the means by which they ascended to the throne was quite different. The movie also doesn't mention that Sibylla had a half-sister named Isabella, who was still alive at the time and had a claim to the throne as well. Both Sibylla and Isabella were the daughters of Amalric I, although Sibylla was from Amalric's first wife, Agnes, while Isabella was the daughter of his second wife, Maria Comnena. If you remember, Maria was then married to Balian of Ebelin, so that's where he comes into the picture here. And actually, Balian and Maria worked together to get Isabella's marriage annulled so that she could marry, instead, a man named Conrad of Montferrat. He was King Baldwin IV's uncle, so they were trying to keep Guy Delisian from seizing control of the throne with the marriage of Conrad and Isabella. That event was one that didn't seem to make King Richard I of England happy, 
As some historians have noted that ancient scholars have documented negative opinions of Balian and Maria for arranging Maria's daughter's marriage. Oh, and the movie also doesn't really mention that Reynold of Chatillon, who's played by Brendan Gleeson in the film, was a supporter of both Sibylla and Guy. He championed a campaign to convince the High Council of Jerusalem to crown Sibylla. They did, and as the movie shows, Sibylla then turned around and crowned Guy. Isabella ended up not getting married to Conrad after all, and there are some sources that indicate she and the man that she did marry, Humphrey IV of Tyrone, swore loyalty to the new monarch, Guy and Sibylla. So there certainly seems to have been some politics at play there, but it's still quite a bit different than what we saw in the movie. There's also no indications of a romantic relationship between Balian and Sibylla. But the movie is correct when showing the massive battle between Salah ad and the Kingdom of Jerusalem. There's a brief moment where we see Reynaud of Chatillon incite a war by killing Salah ad sister. That's true. Well, maybe. It was something that was suggested by the historian William of Tyre, but not really something that modern historians have been able to prove. And it's also true that Reynold raided a Muslim caravan to further damage the truce between Salah ad and the Kingdom of Jerusalem but most believe that actually happened around 1183. Although the movie says Salah ad has about 200,000 soldiers, most historians believe that number was more like 40,000. Still, we don't really know the exact reasons why the real Guy de Lysian wanted war with Salah ad but it would seem that hubris and pride had to have played a big part in it. Oh, and religion. While the movie tries its best to downplay the role of religion, it was at the heart of just about every decision. Remember, the Kingdom of Jerusalem began with the First Crusade. It was formed out of the Pope wanting to take the Holy Lands, in particular the city of Jerusalem, away from the Muslims, or Saracens as they were commonly called by the Christian church back then. So while the movie makes Balian out to be some sort of agnostic and Salah ad to be someone who makes light of Islamic traditions, which we can gather from some of the scenes with Salah ad and Mullah, that's not true at all. This is especially prevalent at the end of the film when Orlando Bloom's version of Balian makes a very cinematic speech about how all religions have claim to the holy places in Jerusalem. The stones of Jerusalem don't matter. The people inside do. Timothy Furnish, the assistant professor of history at Georgia Perimeter College has a PhD in Islamic history and a master's in church history. And he has a great article about some of the historical mistakes in Kingdom of Heaven. I'll make sure to put a link to that. But in that article, he paraphrased the character Dirty Harry from the movie Sudden Impact and said, quote, no, it's not the wrong geography or the fictional characters or the plot foibles that get to me. What really really makes me sick is that nobody, and I mean nobody, in the 12th century was giving speeches about religious tolerance, end quote. The geography Timothy mentions has to do with the mountainous terrain we see in the film. You see, the movie was actually shot in Morocco, so the landscapes we see in the movie aren't anything like what you would see in Jerusalem. I'd encourage you to check out Timothy's article. I'll make sure to put a link to it in the show notes over at basedonatruestorypodcast.com. Even though there was plenty of creative freedom in the movie, the big battle at the end did happen. The film doesn't really show much of the battle when the now King Guy leads his troops to meet Salah ad on the battlefield, but we see that it was the slaughter. And it was, but perhaps it wasn't such a sure thing as the movie implies. As we learned earlier, the 200,000 troops for Salah ad that the movie claims he had was inflated quite a bit. That battle is called the Battle of Hattin because of its location near the town of Hattin, that's H-A-T-T-I-N, and the Horns of Hattin, a notable double hill geographic landmark. As far as we can tell, King Guy's troops consisted of about 20,000 men, while Salah ad had about 30,000 at that time for the battle. Salah ad lost hardly any, while the Kingdom of Jerusalem's army was completely wiped out. Oh, and Guy was actually captured like we saw in the movie. But he was released a few months later and would end up living until 1194. The movie also doesn't mention that Balian was there at the Battle of Hattin. He was one of the commanders, 
but he managed to survive and return to Jerusalem. While the specifics of the movie are mostly fictionalized, in the big final battle, the basic gist is pretty accurate. We likely wouldn't know as much about Balian as we do today if he hadn't led such a masterful defense of the city of Jerusalem after it was besieged by Saladin's forces. But he did, as the movie shows, end up surrendering the city. But the movie was sped up quite a bit. You see, the Battle of Hattin happened in July of 1187, while the siege of Jerusalem took place from September 20th to October 2nd of the same year. Oh, and the terms didn't seem to be as favorable as the movie shows. The people of Jerusalem were given a choice, either pay a ransom for your freedom, or if you couldn't pay within 50 days, you'd be forced into slavery. At the very end of the movie, we see Balian and Sibylla run away together. While they're back in France, the scene of Balian's blacksmithing at the beginning of the movie, we see the King of England arrive looking for him. They're heading off to start another crusade to reclaim Jerusalem. Well, we already learned there wasn't a romantic relationship between Balian and Sibylla. Instead, Balian left the city about a month after the surrender, around November 20th, and went to Tripoli where his wife and children were. The mention of another crusade was correct, though. We've all seen the story of Robin Hood and how he was fighting against the evil Prince John who was trying to take the throne in the absence of Richard the Lionheart. Well, this is the other side of that tale. In 1191, King Richard of England arrived at the coastal city of Acre in modern-day Israel. For two years, he fought to recapture lands in the name of the Christian church. He never made it to Jerusalem, though. Falling ill to scurvy and realizing that John was taking advantage of his absence in England, King Richard made peace with Salah Adin on September 2nd, 1192. It was a three-year truce that let Christians access Jerusalem. King Richard returned to England on October 9th, and only a few months later, on March 4th, 1193, Salah Adin passed away after taking ill with fever. Despite being a great military leader and ruler, Salah Adin didn't keep any of the wealth he amassed for himself. Instead, he gave it away to the poor in his kingdom. According to the scholar Ibn Shaddad, when Salah Adin died, the total amount of his riches equated to one piece of gold and 40 pieces of silver. This episode of Based on a True Story was written and produced by me, Dan Lefebvre. There's so many great sources about the Crusades. But if you want to learn more about some of the characters we talked about in this episode, I'd recommend starting with Ibn Shaddad's biography of Salah ad -Din. Then there's the book, The Leper King and His Heirs by Barnard Hamilton, or the article that I mentioned in the episode by Timothy Furnish. I'll add links to those books and many more resources for you to learn even more over at basedonatruestorypodcast.com. Before we get to the answer to the Two Truths and a Lie game, here's another five-star review. This one comes from JJ4852 over on Apple Podcasts with the title, Interesting Facts Meet Great Entertainment. I found this podcast while looking for background on Newsies. I liked that you incorporated the news article about the boys in your podcast. Nice job. Perhaps the writer of Newsies chose Pulitzer over Hearst as the antagonist because of the name of his paper, The World. So, when the Newsies sing, the world will know, this has a double meaning. For a future project, please consider the movie Barney in 2011 and starring Jack Black, Shirley MacLaine, and Matthew McConaughey. Thank you for all your efforts. Wow, that's a great point about that song. I'm not sure if that's true, but that's really interesting. I'm so glad you enjoyed that episode. It's one I actually wanted to do after watching the musical with my wife. And thanks for the recommendation of Bernie. I'll make sure to add that to my backlog. Although, to be completely honest, I've got hundreds of movies in that backlog to do, so if you want to push that to the front of the line, that's a bonus for producers of the show who sign up over at patreon.com slash based on a true story podcast. Okay, now it's time for the answer to our true truths and a lie game from the beginning of the episode. As a refresher, here are the two truths and one lie. Number one. Balian was an agnostic who preached religious equality in the face of a holy war between Muslims and Christians. 
Number two, there was no romantic relationship between Balian and Sibylla. Number three, Salah ad army slaughtered the Kingdom of Jerusalem's army at the Battle of Hattin. Did you find out which one is a lie? The lie is number one. Unfortunately, religion was pretty much at the center of the massive slaughtering and deaths that occurred during the First Crusade. Well, all of the Crusades. Do you know more about the story of Salah ad -Din? Balian or the Siege of Jerusalem? Why not join the Based on a True Story Facebook group and share it with the community? Oh, and don't forget you can pick up your own Based on a True Story t-shirt and merch over at Based on a True Story podcast.com slash merch. You can also follow the show on Instagram, which is at Based on a True Story, where I like to post some of the photos of the real places and faces mentioned in Kingdom of Heaven. Well, maybe not photos of Balian, as close as we can get though. You can also find me on Twitter. I'm at Dan Lefebvre, D-A-N-L-E-F-E-B. Or if social media isn't your thing, you can shoot me a good old-fashioned email at dan at basedonatruestorypodcast.com. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll chat with you again really soon.